Released in August 1994, so pretty much exactly 13 years after the original IBM PC, this DOS handheld device came with 2 MB of RAM, a CPU roughly double the speed of the original 8088, and it had everything you needed for productivity on the road, a built-in spreadsheet, an organizer, a phone book, coming along with MS-DOS 5. And rumor has it, it's capable of even running Windows 3.0. It's obsolete technology no one uses today, but I'll bring it back to life. I'm the Vintage Collector and these are my stories. The HP 200 LX was not the first handheld PC of its kind. HP had released the HP 100 LX and the 95 LX predecessors in 1991 and 1993 respectively. Still, they were not the first in the game, as that honor goes to the 1989 Atari portfolio. Common to all of them is how they crammed an entire PC on par, if not better than the original IBM PC specs into such a small form factor. This is how far miniaturization has come in the mid 90s. Given it was released in 1994, the 200LX lasted until 1999, whereas its predecessor, the 95LX, being in production until 2001, so spanning an entire decade, before eventually being displaced by the Windows CE based 300LX successor. The 200LX was surely the most capable of its time, coming with 1, 2 and 4 MB of RAM, along with a 7.91 MHz 8186 compatible CPU, making it good enough to run on two AA sized batteries. It offered 600x200 CGA black and white graphics, which made it compatible to almost all DOS software out there. And with the PCMCIA Type 1 slot, you could add a flash card for extending the storage. Earlier models couldn't do that, or only by means of expensive battery backed SROM cards. For my experiment, I swap in a CF card with a whopping 128MB capacity, which is more than enough to run Windows 3.0. I wonder why anyone would like to run Windows on this machine. True. But sometimes it's just about doing something because you can and not because of its practicality. As the 200LX doesn't have a touch panel, I need to build an adapter first in order to attach a pointing device. Now, the unit doesn't have any of the typical DB9 or DB25 connectors, but on the right hand side, just in between the IRDA and the power connector, there is this socket. It looks like an IDC mail connector and you can actually fabricate a custom connector using an IDC female plug. The only catch is to use a connector with a 2mm spacing as the usual connectors with the 2.54mm spacing found on most PCBs and breadboards won't fit. Now, the pinout is thankfully well documented and it's actually just straight through for the DB9 connector. While there is different cabling possibilities, I decided to create just a straight connection, so I'm free to decide if I hook up a mouse or a serial cable for Laplink or other users. As the connector I have is a bit too wide, I have to cut a few millimeters left and right for it to fit into the socket. Originally, I wanted to make it a crimped connection, but it turned out to not work correctly, as my cables were a bit too thick. So eventually I gave in and just soldered the wires to the connector. At the end I then also did some measurements with the beeper just to see that all the wires made proper contact. For the final assembly my daughter stepped in and offered some precious help. So with the connector finished it's now the question how to use it. The built-in software locks the COM port by default, so you have to release it for use on DOS using the surctl-w command. I had then copied the ctmouse driver onto the flash, which by running claims to detect the Microsoft mouse on COM1. Then I just fired up the MS-DOS editor and see here, we get the block-shaped text mode mouse cursor, so works perfectly fine. 
Having said that, it's now the question if a standard copy of Laplink also works. Technically, the HP 200LX already came with Laplink pre-installed, but I installed my own copy of Laplink 5. And as it seems, the adapter is good enough to perform zero-line file transfers. While the 200LX came with an embedded ROM version of MS-DOS 5, it was merely a stripped-down version of DOS 5, with most utilities being absent. Now I just took an HBOM version of MS-DOS 5 and copied all DOS files over to the PCMCIA drive at a colon backslash DOS. I then also added a shell statement to C colon backslash config.sys and pointed it to the A colon backslash DOS backslash command.com file. The reason is because the default command com coming with the 200LX is not fully compatible to Windows 3.0. Now, there are sources explaining how to create the bare minimalistic Windows 3.0 install, which consumes only some 600 kilobytes on disk. Back in the days, this perfectly made sense when the storage capacity for SRAM and early CF cards was in the 1 to 4 megabytes range. Now, I have a 128 megabytes compact flash card, so storage is not the limit here, and I want to try setting up a vanilla Windows 3.0. The setup program performs the initial stage without any complaints. Once it switches to graphical mode, the installation routine would stall and complain about missing files. I initially thought about an incomplete file transfer, so I copied over all files again. But the setup program kept complaining, for example, about this missing ramdrive.sys file. So I was checking if the file was in fact absent. I found that it was there, though not by the name of ramdrive.sys, but ramdrive.sy$. I'm not sure if the setup program should have uncompressed this by itself, or if it was an inconsistency with the setup files. Anyways, I took the expand utility to uncompress the remdrive.sys file. And I did so for the other files ending on the dollar sign as well, just to be safe. And this was the magic trick, which made the setup program run through. So I have now a running Windows version, to which I can also install Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Word. Now, with only 640 kilobytes of RAM available and the 186 CPU at hand, Windows can only run in real mode. So memory is scarce, but it works. Speaking of memory, the 200LX boots into the application launcher by default. In order to run Windows, you should exit the launcher to have as much free memory as possible. But you can customize c colon backslash autoexec.bat and you can replace the factory default file and either boot directly into the DOS prompt or Windows instead of the traditional application launcher. So, you shoehorned Windows onto this device. Now you don't tell me you can run games on it as well, or can you? In fact, it can run games. There's a wide range of games out there that actually work, even some more demanding ones like Test Drive or Lemmings. Also Prince of Persia works, and one of my favorite classics, Maniac Mansion, goes as well. And this concludes my look into running Windows 3.0 on this HP 200LX. It's probably not as useful as it's quite slow and the system RAM is an issue here. 
Even with the device proclaiming to have 2 megabytes of RAM, this amount is not really available to the operating system. The HP 200LX lets you divide the RAM between the system memory and the RAM drive. A maximum of 640 kilobytes can be assigned to the system memory, whereas the rest goes to the RAM drive. And while it allows you to reduce the system memory to be less than 640 kilobytes in favor to a bigger RAM drive, you can't do the other way round. So essentially, having even the 4 or 8 megabytes model or even an aftermarket memory upgrade will unfortunately not increase the RAM available to DOS. This concept of dividing the hardware RAM between system memory and a hard drive was then later also seen again in Windows CE based handhelds, although this time round with lesser restrictions. But the Alex series wasn't the first time ever we saw this concept. Ten years prior, this HP110 from 1984 didn't come with any disk drives either and likewise it allowed you to divide its generous 272 kilobytes of RAM between system memory and the RAM drive. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any proof that the HP110 was the first ever machine to support this memory division technique. So, if any one of you knows about an even earlier computer to support this particular feature, then please let me know about it in the comments below. During my investigations on the HP 200LX, I stumbled across yet another very interesting topic. Did you know that you could actually run Andrew Tanbaum's Minix on the 200LX? There's this nice video on YouTube and it made me curious to give it a try as well. Minix on the 200LX, how awesome is that? Anyway, I'm the Vintage Collector and this was my story. Thanks for being with me and see you next time. If you check out this channel's community tab, you'll find some polls on potential upcoming videos. You're very welcome to upvote on upcoming topics or drop in new ones you'd like me to chase down.